Hello and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi review and this particular week we're looking at an amplifier from the company called New Prime. The amplifier itself is an integrated model, small in footprint, and it's called the New Prime IDA8, IDA-8. Price terms, well, you're looking at £1,195. That's €1,250. Euros. Now, before we get any further and before we start talking about the techie stuff, I think we need to take a closer look. Welcome to the Closer Look section for the new Prime IDA8 integrated amplifier. And as you can see in front of you, this is, well, it's a wee little thing. It's an amplifier that weighs in at 4.3 kilograms or around nine and a half pounds in old money and spans just over 235 millimeters by 281 by 55 millimeters or just over 9 by 11 by 2 inches. This integrated amplifier is aimed at those looking for a small footprint design. Inside, well, it's based on a Class A plus D heart while sitting on a toroidal transformer, so I was intrigued to see just how this one would pan out in sonic terms. The techie idea is to offer detail from its ultra-neat Class A module, but in an efficient and low-noise Class D manner. All of that rests upon four isolation feet. On the front, you've got a volume control, an oft-ignored part when sonic excellence is considered. This is based upon a resistor ladder, offering 99 steps of half a decibel each, half a decibel increments, that is, with a single resistor in the signal path at any one time. Also on the front of this low slung chassis is an input knob, that's on the far left. You press this knob in for a few seconds to bring the amplifier to life. On the far right, as I say, is that volume knob, Press this knob in to mute the sound. In the centre is a numeric readout for both the source and the volume. Flipping over to the rear now and you'll find on the far left an IEC socket and fuse. To the right of that are four offset speaker posts and to the right of those are a pair of subwoofer outputs and a single set of analog inputs. What follows that, keeping on to that rightward direction, is a pair of USB ports. You'll find a type B to connect to something like a laptop, for example, and this port supports up to 32-bit 384 kilohertz or DSD256. And next to that is a type A. Now this is not for a music loaded USB stick. In fact, it's for a dongle, which you can purchase separately. I didn't guess for this review, but you can buy it and plug that in and it will give you Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. In addition to those USB sockets is a coax and you'll also find an optical. Both of those support up to 32-bit 192 in PCM mode or DSD64. Right there and then, you can see the target audience of this amplifier because of that digital emphasis. Now, initially, I did wish that the subwoofer outputs could and maybe should have been dropped in preference for an extra pair of analog inputs. That said, I can see that the IDA8 will attract users looking to build a compact AV system, wishing to connect the IDA8 to a TV via optical. 
in this way, then sure, the subwoofer outputs make perfect sense. Presented in either silver or black in general terms, the IDA8 offers a subtle styling, is solid in build, and just enough weight to give it substance. Oh, and let's not forget the included and rather diminutive remote control, which offers basic controls amounting to volume and mute, display on and off, and source select. So, there you are. That's the techie aspect of this little amplifier. Really though, how does this one sound? Well, let's go to the sound quality tests and we'll find out. Welcome to the sound quality tests for the new Prime IDA8 integrated amplifier. And I began my tests with CD and one of my all time favorite groups, Stereo Lab, and the album Switched On. Now, this track offers a relatively calming dual female vocal surrounded by a, well, a cacophony from ye old modular synths and electric guitars. Buried behind the stereo image is a sort of quiet space in which the drums have been inserted. This pool of quietude allows the drums to offer a crisp strike pattern while the cymbals have room to breathe, but you need to focus on them to really hear them. But it's easy for an amplifier to swamp this entire area with screeching bleed from the guitars. So the new Prime had a task on its hands here. So how did it respond? Well, straight away I noticed a low noise performance, specifically around the mid-range and the treble areas. Treble in the form of a simply hit cymbal was buried in the mix and really needed space to maneuver. Without a low noise presentation, you're gonna have to search for that cymbal with the ear, or at worst, you might miss it altogether. Not with the IDA8 though. Not only could the ear locate the cymbal hits around the drum kit, but there was an appreciable amount of space for cymbal reverb tails, that echo effect, giving this low key instrument a somewhat larger presence. Now, as for the adjacent drums, well, they performed very well indeed. Perhaps there wasn't quite the bass toned punch that you might hear on a lower cost Audio Lab 6000A, but nevertheless, the IDA8 did offer a nicely positioned bass response. Bass wasn't exactly shy here, don't get me wrong, it certainly offered a characterful performance, and it sat well in the mix. It never really dominated the mids, which is a good thing but took a more balanced part in the overall performance, I would say. Now, apart from the treble, the other major highlight was, of course, the mid-range, specifically the upper mids. The amount of air swelling around the upper mids was plentiful indeed, and this meant that each instrument and vocal on this track had lots of room around it. Nothing and no one was crowded here, which meant that you could really hear the edges of the guitar, the edges of the drums, the modular synths and the vocals. This meant that any subtle detail made it to the ear intact. There was no smudging or blurring of that information. The sense of clarity was high indeed. Now, I switched to vinyl and the more laid back King Singer's Polydor album, Encore from 1971 and the track None But The Lonely Heart, and that provided a smooth and rather calming delivery of a distinctly neutral persona. The harmony voices seemed to have plenty of time to do their work, which meant that the vocals were at ease and rather in control. There was a piano next to these voices and that had a real delicacy and quite a fragility that only enhanced the emotional nature of this track. I then plugged my MacBook into the rear of the IDA8. 
and I played the Police's classic single, Message in a Bottle, via DSD-64. Now, DSD-64 is the baseline resolution for DSD as a format, as a resolution within that format. And, well, it sounds it. DSD-64 sounds a little restrained, a little bit tense compared to, say, DSD-256. So it was a bit of a challenge for the IDA-8 to make much sense of this one, but by gum, it did just that. The mid-range insight offered by the IDA-8 meant that the maximum amount of information was dragged from this file. Sure, there remained a slightly clinical feel to this track, which was wholly the fault of the file, I have to emphasize, not the amplifier, this was a DSD-64 thing, but the IDA-8, well, that made the very best of the band's performance offering both drive and energy combined with a pretty balanced output. Considering bass drove the entire track, while percussive delicacy was also much in evidence. And in a similar vein, I connected my modded Aston and Kern AK120 to the optical port, and I played Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff, which provided a welcome balance to this track. Now I've played this track through some amplifiers, some integrated, and it can get a little bit clinical, but not here. What the new Prime offered was a welcome balance and neutrality, giving due space to the lead vocal, while also providing a sense of neutrality to the bass guitar and the keyboards. So how do I conclude the review of the new Prime IDA8 integrated amplifier? Well, in terms of design, the IDA8 is an odd one. Small in stature and low in footprint, it leans towards the digital user in design terms with a surface of digital inputs and just the one pair of analog inputs. Sure, you could easily swap those analog inputs going from CD to vinyl and back again if you wish, although that could be a bit of a hassle in the long term if you're a regular user of both formats. Cassette users, well, they shouldn't even really apply in the first place. That said, if you have a restricted hi-fi chain, let's say, I don't know, let's say you own a CD player and what, a laptop, and let's also add a digital audio player, well, the IDA8 will give you a neat, rather wonderfully sounding heart to your hi-fi while providing a sort of docking hub for those roaming digital devices like that laptop and that digital audio player. The new Prime is ideal for those short on space or for those looking at, say, a second system in a smaller bedroom or a kitchen or even as the core to a simple AV system. The IDA8 is a well-built, neatly designed, beautifully sounding amplifier that will be a success in any stable hi-fi system. And that's it, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this review, and thank you very much for all of your support that you give me on this channel. If you haven't already done so, if I could ask you to click on the like and subscribe just below here please. Check out the description, there are some chapter headings if you want to navigate around this video. You'll also find my social media links, there's a link to my Facebook group if you'd like to join that. Also my website which you're welcome to check out, it has lots of material on there you won't find on this channel. And also my Patreon channel please, which keeps this channel going without the generous support of my patrons, and if you're one of them, again, thank you very much for your support. Without Patreon, this channel does not exist. So there's a link down there for that as well. Also, Patreon members get an early bird view of all of my YouTube 
videos. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you'll see my videos around Friday. Otherwise, they'll turn up on the following Sunday. Any road up, I will be back on Tuesday for Tuneful Tuesday. And we have... What are we doing? What are we doing? Could... No. Could be a magazine. Yes. I think we might be doing a magazine. I reckon. That's Tuneful Tuesday. So, yeah, check out for that. Going to be some vinyl news. Maybe some CD review. I don't know. We'll find out. I'm got clue. We'll find out at that time. So, please join me for that. I'd love to have your company. And until that time, folks, bye-bye for now. <laughs>